Hello and welcome to an NKU Minges tutorial for Construct 2. This is build 132 and has subject to change. So we're going to start by creating a new document with common objects and open that up. The common objects one actually has a bunch of different things you can use like keyboard and storage, browser, audio, stuff like that that is not acceptable from just the blank one so that's why we're using it. So we're going to title the project uh, test project one where you can fill in the rest of that it's pretty self-explanatory. So the thing, second thing we're going to do is change the window size. So I'm going to choose 500 by 700 and then you can zoom out and see there's you can actually see it right here this dotted line shows you the viewable area of your game if you click on the background of your layout one you're going to end up seeing this so your layout size is completely different from what we just set up so let's make it the same let's make it another 500 by 700 and so now you've got the viewable area now my game the one we're going to be working with is going to be completely sprite based so these images are very small and very grain very grainy this is intentional and as most of you should know that the that old games all were used with 8-bit 16-bit and onwards until we have the complexity of video games that we have today so i'm going to start off by opening up my game sprites folder and bring construct 2 back up and we're going to import your first sprite so the first sprite is going to be the player ship sprite we're going to just drag and drop that onto the layout. So let's start by double clicking on it and bringing it up. So we have the origin, which shows you the exact center of the image. Now this is where the computer thinks things should spawn from. It also thinks that when the object spawns itself, that this is where it's going to be. It also works as a very useful anchor. So let's zoom in and check out what we can do. So let's first off create another image point. And that one's going to be right where it wants to be. In another image point, we're going to put it on the left wing. And we're going to create a third one and put it on the right wing. Now the origin is about where I want it, but let's, let's bring it down some. So I'm going to bring it down to the, to the middle there of my ship. Now let's work with the hitbox. Well, that's a little too big. And the game type we're going to be building is well, it's a bullet hell game, so it's going to need a very small hitbox, around one pixel. So to get a similar effect, I'm just going to drag and drop all of the points to the center. But I've got too many of them, so I'm going to hit the delete key and delete them individually. Now, you can also right click and click delete, and that also will do that. So we're going to drag them roughly to the middle of the ship. And then we're going to leave them there. Now, when I play tested this, I realized something, that the wings were too long. So we're going to end up actually taking them off using the eraser tool. You can change the size of the eraser tool by clicking up and down arrows here, along with the hardness. So we're just going to start erasing the wings, and that seems about as long as it wants to be, and do the same thing to the other side. And now we're going to get rid of the top and bring it down a bunch. And this, this is just used because of the type of game that we're doing. But it shows you how to use this tool as well. So now that you've got a ship that's roughly symmetric, we're going to crop it down to size using the crop tool. This will automatically resize the ship to what it thinks it should be. And this actually really helps if you have images that are really, really small or really, really big and their canvas size doesn't actually cooperate. You don't want to hit the save button because it'll bring up an actual save dialog and you can title it whatever you want, but it'll actually create a new image based off of the one that you edited. So instead we're just going to hit X because we're only going to be using this edited one inside the game. So the next thing we want to do is create a behavior for it. So we're going to click the behaviors button in the properties dialog box and we're going to click plus and create a behavior. So the very first behavior we're going to create is 8-direction. Eight 8-direction eight allows the player to move. So now that we have that up, we're going to actually change the properties of the behavior. So you can change the max speed to how many pixels per second you're going to go. And I'm going to stick with 400. 
acceleration and deceleration we're going to bring all the way up to let's say a million and you can actually change how many directions you can go whether that's up down left right four or eight directions we're going to stick with eight and let's go with the angle to no this will stop your ship from flailing around random directions instead of always pointing forward so that's a useful feature so now that we have this set up let's import an enemy sprite as well to go along with it so let's go with the spike ship when you highlight three frames like that and you drag them in it actually creates an animation now it doesn't matter what you bring in so for instance if I drag all of these four different ships onto the canvas it'll create an animation which each one of those ships has a different frame so we don't want that we're going to end up just having a complete mess at that point so in a similar vein we're going to take this ship we're going to resize it by holding down shift and making it bigger or smaller depending on what you want so we're going to make this ship bigger now let's also double click on it and we're going to be back to this screen and let's zoom in to see what we got and let's also create an image point on roughly slightly behind the tip of the gun so now that we have that up we're going to right click on this over here or actually bring that up right click on the origin and click to apply to whole animation and right click on image point one apply to whole animation now this is useful because technically the image points don't carry over from image to image we're using very static ships with only animation on their tails where their where their propulsion comes from in other games such as fighters the hitbox and the image points are going to change frame to frame so that's why that's needed to do that in a similar area we're going to end up creating a hitbox and so let's change what the hitbox looks like by grabbing these red nodes and dragging them across the screen now mine isn't going to be perfect but you guys can do whatever you want I just want a general area of how of how my ships going to be interacted with so if you run out of image points like I have you can right click and add a point it'll always add a point to the right of whatever you just did or to the left if you're on the bottom it kind of does this whole circle thing so if you add one here it'll add one to the left and if you add one here it'll add it to the right so it'll do that so but you want your hitbox to also follow because if you end up just having the ship like this and you move over to the next frame it doesn't follow so in this case we'll right click on it on the hitbox itself and click on apply to whole animation now that you'll see that your rest of your frames also have the same hitbox so let's exit out of that and give it some behaviors so we're going to give it a relatively simple AI with the exception of actually firing any bullets let's just give it the bullet behavior by itself now let's also add the sign behavior we're going to add the sign behavior twice so that we can give it two different types of motion So the very first thing we're going to do is give it the, behave, the bullet behavior. We're going to change the speed down to 100. And we're going to set the angle to whatever we want. So at the top, you can set the angle to 0 or 180 we're going to, or 90 or 270, depending on what angle you want to face. I want to go and animate across the screen to the left. So we're going to change the angle of this object to 180. That flips it upside down. We don't want that. So let's open up the image again, zoom in so you guys can see it, flip it upside down, next frame, flip it upside down, next frame, flip it upside down. These are the rotate tools. You can also use shift to rotate the entire animation, but I didn't want to. So there we go, ships right back up, right back up, just where we wanted it. So another thing we have to do is make sure that it loops. So if you just double click, you'll see this, this box in the properties and you can actually edit it. So, so we're gonna click on yes instead of no, 
and I just let it loop. So now the ship will actually animate when it's on screen. And now that I think about it, I don't necessarily need two sign behaviors. So you can click a, the behavior, click the trash can. Yes, it'll go away. So now that we have a speed of 100, we're not going to allow it to accelerate or gravity or bounce off anything. We're going to move directly onto the sign. So the sign can be vertical, horizontal, or any of these other features. We're going to go with vertical. We're going to go with a normal sine wave. You can also choose any of these other ones if you want it more jagged. So we're going to go with the period of one. The period is in seconds of time. We're going to go with the random period of two, offset period of two, offset period offset random of two, and we'll give it a random magnitude of 100. The magnitude decrees how many pixels it'll go up or down before it'll go back. That's, that's, the, that's how many pixels it'll go up and down. So if you want to see a value at the bottom you, or whatever you're clicking on, if you want to read what it actually does, there's a definition here at the bottom of your screen, and you can use that for various things. So in our case, if you want to see what the magnitude is, there you go. Magnitude random, there you go. So it'll go between 50 and 150 pixels. And that's about as all we're going to need now. So the next thing we're going to do now that we have these two sprites is we're going to highlight them and hit Control X. And we're going to, it says deleted, but we cut them. We're going to add some more layers and we're going to rename our layers from the bottom up. We're going to name them background we're going to name them bullets. We're going to name them ships. And the last layer will be named HUD for the heads up display. Now the heads up display will also carry over and have part of the other um, actions including uh, your pause menu. So now that we have that, let's go on and paste our images that we had. So we're just going to control V or right click paste and now move wherever you want and click. Actually that was the wrong one again so we're going to click on the ships and do it again and here you go. So now that they're pasted you can tell which layer they're on simply by clicking the check mark. So it basically the check mark shows you whether it's viewable or not. So we want them to be viewable. So now that we have that let's save our project which is the little floppy disk up in the corner there. So let's make this test one. And for me, I already created this. So there you go. And you've got two things. If you want to test your game, just click on Run Layout, and it'll bring it up in your provided browser. For me, I chose Firefox. And here you go. You've got a game where you can move your sprite, and you've got an enemy sprite that flies right off the side of the screen. So. That's the very beginning of the tutorial. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to do basic AI, how to add and change different behaviors to make sure that you don't waste too much space, and we're going to get involved with the event sheet, which shows you how to interact with different sprites, how to make them work in different browsers, audio, work with gamepads, keyboards, whatever. So this has been a tutorial by Spencer Shevchik of the NKU Ninjas for Construct 2.